Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat. And I'm talking today with Fabian. Hello. Hi, I'm Fabian. Uh, I'm an MVP from Germany since May this year. All the way since earlier this month. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> so, what, so what do you do? Uh, what, where, where do you work and what's your role? I'm currently a cloud architect at Klukkanja GAB in uh, Germany. And I mostly support clients um, working with Microsoft products about the Microsoft Defender suite. So everything from Microsoft Defender for Endpoint to Microsoft Defender for Cloud and everything that's related to that. And I see, so you're a cloud and data center management. What's, in, what's encompassed within that focus area for MVPs? So, I can only speak for myself because this area is very broad and cloud and data center is very, very big. That's, it's just um, very, yeah, because because you have a lot of people that are Azure focused and they describe themselves the same way and they're an Azure MVP. And so like I get the data center management side of it, but when you attach cloud, that could be a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So yeah, mostly I think uh, I landed in this category because of my focus on PowerShell and the security side. And since Microsoft has no security MVPs yet, uh, I think it's a bit of a catch-all. Everybody who has to do something with cloud uh, lands in somewhere in between. And since PowerShell is one of my hobbies, uh, I think that's the data man center management part of it. Well, it's almost like that they could, I realize now there's a focus on GitHub specifically. And, but this is kind of between that and this, it's kind of like the DevOps world. So it's all the operational controls, the traditional DevOps type activities. Yes, yes, for sure. Well, very cool. Well, so your brand new MVP, um, so what was your kind of journey to becoming an MVP? I'm always interested to hear like what your path was, how long you were trying to become an MVP, if you were at all trying. Yeah, actually, no. So um, it wasn't ever my goal to get this title and I'm very honored to have gotten it <laughs> still. Um, yeah, I think my path on the Microsoft Horizon started in about 2000. Eight. In 2008, I visited the PowerShell conference in Europe in Hanover and was very hyped by the conference and everybody around there and started a meetup group after that hmm. with a friend of mine, Christopher Burmeister, and we both uh, thought it would be great to have our own meetup in Hamburg uh, related to PowerShell. So I started that and... Yeah, then I started to talk at conferences and other meetups. And I think one came to another and then I started blogging more. So I had a blog since I think about 2011, but initially mm -hmm. I started a little bit for two years, uh, only in German. And uh, then like most blogs around this time, it, yeah was mostly dust and <laughs> nothing else <laughs> yeah and uh in 2021 i started again with blogging regularly and tried to yeah just write up what helped me or what i did find uh in my daily it business and what i thought would be interesting to other people and that's the same for stuff i talk about at uh conferences and meetups it's stuff I stumble upon and don't find resources that mm -hmm. met what I was searching for. Or even sometimes I use it just as a note for myself. So uh, as a little notebook, okay, and I write up whatever I learned because sometimes there are great blogs already out there, but I have to do it myself. And after that, it's like a lessons learned. Let's write it up and maybe somebody 
comes upon some of my posts and find them mm -hmm. useful as well. That's one of my, the things I, I, I love coming across when I'm researching something and I find when people are writing about something that are kind of on the same journey, but maybe six months before me or a year before me, and, but they're doing the whole, uh, you know, the working out loud um, model where they're sharing their journey, what they've learned, the resources they, that they pointed to. Uh, I love that style of writing and content and videos, of course, as well. I mean, one of the, the only complaint that I have <laughs> of this idea, you know, when you go in, you're searching on something, you really need an answer and you go into like the forums and out in tech community and you see 50 different people asking, yes, and I have the same problem. And then there's never an answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I like Everybody the follow-up. Google yeah. results. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like the follow-up. Somebody's up. posting yeah. like, yeah, I fixed it. And yeah. never or, an explanation right. about how. <laughs> or or what's even worse is when you have like a Microsoft person who's like, hey, can we jump on the phone and I'll walk you through the solution? It's like, whoa, whoa, wait a second. You know, <laughs> please I, share it publicly. I, I know. Yeah, but yeah. I think that's something really great about the community and the Microsoft space and I think in other spaces as well, uh, that there are many people trying to push their ideas through different things like Twitter, blogs, videos. And so you have the opportunity to find really great answers for problems out there. And sometimes um, if you find something where there is no information or not enough, then uh, if you find the solution, please write it up. And I think that's that's the best thing you can do for the community at the moment. Yeah. Well, that's why it's it's so important to properly cite, you know, and reference the work. If you yeah, are definitely. if you're answering a question that's out on tech community, then grab the link to that, um, share it, or go back into that post and say, hey, I just did a blog post. And so you get a lot of people that do that. I've done that. I'm sure you've done the same thing. You go in and you say, hey, I just answered this question, but over on my blog. And and then and I do a walkthrough of this solution. And and I it's great to see the traffic if you pay attention to that stuff, where people are coming from and how much that comes through the forums is useful around that. I just, I, I, I'm just thinking, uh, I'm, uh, I, I wish that the Microsoft would, if a Microsoft person touches a question out in the forums, they should be required if it's answered, if it's solved, to go back and post the necessary information. That yeah, should be a requirement. The answer. That would be yeah. great. Yes. Yeah. So I think Microsoft has come a long way in documentation. So today's docsmicrosoft.com is just awesome. Yeah. Uh, like 20 years ago when I started in IT, it was like, yeah, there is some article, but maybe not so great and they come such a long way and using github as a method to really be able to say oh there's something wrong in this and i just open a pull request and that's yep. great as well what's well, so that i don't know if people understand how much of that great comment content because i agree i think microsoft made some structural changes but one of the biggest differences that 20 years ago they didn't do was that they've tapped into the community to provide a lot of that content. So there's a ton of content that the world, it does, they don't advertise the fact that, hey, this stuff was written by, not all the time, you know, written by people in the community. Microsoft will even occasionally pay MVPs and other experts to go in there and write, you know, certain content that they know is a gap there. But then a lot of it is, like you said, it's it's uh, it, it's managed through GitHub. People go and identify, hey, this isn't right. They'll go in and make a correction. They'll do a pull request, change the documentation, post it out there. So it really is. And there, Microsoft is recognizing and rewarding people for those kinds of contributions, which is part of where the GitHub recognition comes from. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's something uh, that is really showing how Microsoft just shifted like from 15 years ago in a whole, it's a whole other mindset. Community first and um, pushing products faster and all the product engagement through product groups and stuff like that. So that's not something you only can do with when you are an MVP. So the customer, uh, 
programs are open for everybody who has an MBA as a company. And mm -hmm. if you have, you should join because I think that's, that's the best way. If you work with the products, get to know the product groups and um, get information right out of first hand. Yeah. Well, maybe we should be more specific. Like where do you actually, where would you suggest people would go and sign up? Like, my, my first thought would be like the patterns and practices team. I know there's renaming or whatever around that, but that's an area where you can go and find a number of different projects that might be of interest to you personally or your company and join in, just start joining those, those calls. Yeah. And there's also the um, security guys over at Microsoft. They are very open in their um, roadmaps. So uh, there are different <clears throat> um, yeah, like connection programs you can join. I don't have the name at the moment. So, uh, but I, there are really great options there. And I think AKMS slash uh, security, they have it listed somewhere around there. And um, yeah, as I said, it's not just for MVPs or a few chosen ones, but everybody who's able to figure out how to get an MBA, so um, most of the time, just talk to the Microsoft representative in your company, uh, try to figure mm -hmm. out who that is, and they are more than happy to help you to get into uh, such programs. Well, of course, they also have, like, we've got build going on, uh, you know, we're, yeah. this is recorded a while back, so this is, it's actually happening this week while we're talking, just kicked off today. Um, but there are a number of different programs that you'll hear about in those sessions, like it, one that I'm involved in is the it's the Viva customer connection program or partner yeah. program. Um, so I think you could if anybody is interested in because there are customers of all sizes around the world and they go through and they talk about what's coming with the product. They talk about deployment questions. They share stories and examples. It touches on for those that you know, in the modern workplace, touches on each of the different workloads that are involved with the solution. So, you know, SharePoint and Teams and, and other things that are happening there. Um, and I, I think you can, I, I think it's just VCCP uh, at Microsoft.com and you can reach out and say, hey, I'd love to join these calls. And so they're actively, you know, inviting people to go and join that. So there's a lot of stuff like that, depending on your area of focus, what you want to get involved in. Yeah, for everybody, everybody who's interested in the identity uh, community, the identity advisors is a great JAMA community out there and also sharing information that is really, really top notch. And uh, also it's another level of interaction with other peers, as you said, it's not only that Microsoft uh, product group members are there, but also other guys and girls uh, that work in the field and doing doing this work and say, okay, I have this problem and somebody else is here. No problem, I have this <laughs> yesterday. So let's figure it out. Well, I know that you're also very involved in the uh, user groups, local user group stuff. That's another place to go get involved and, and oh, usually the organizers like yourself and other people that are part of your board, you know, are, are usually connected on other programs and other opportunities. So that's a great way to get involved. Yeah, it's the local uh, meetups and I hope post COVID or well, I hope we are post COVID, uh, yeah. it will get more uh, from Teams meetings to read meetups again, because uh, that's something uh, it's really great to meet other people working in the same field in your city or around it and to get a network by meeting those there it's just great and i think you just have to google for your field of expertise and meet up and you will find many user groups out there that uh, are happy to have you yeah that's the the secret of uh, is just getting involved people say well how do i get started i said well you find something and, and get started. And I, I'd say that, you know, you have a lot of people that will come out to one or two meetings and then just kind of disappeared. And then, and then they wonder why, well, I never, I never got you know pulled into something. I never really got involved, you know, and, and 
it's like, yeah, you have to be consistent. You have to participate. You have to, I'd say even initially think about more about giving back than what you get out of that. It's, it's inevitable that you are going to individually or your company have benefit out of, you know, get some benefit out of participating in the user groups through the connections that you make. You might hear two or three months in a row topics that you're like, yeah, I'm aware of this stuff. And then suddenly there's topic like, wow, I've never heard about this. This is something that can add value. So you just need to be consistent and be there and be present. Yeah, and I think one more uh, really important thing is if you are already very experienced in one topic, don't be afraid to go to those meetings where somebody is uh, explaining something more basic because um, in the end, the room is full of people who is interesting in this topic and you will find people there that are on your level or maybe you can help people. So it's just a great exchange. And don't expect that meetups are always the newest of the newest and just the hot stuff, but um, they are there for everybody. And so yeah. they have to accommodate for that as well. I had one of the favorite, one of the favorite things I ever said to a, a very snarky thing that I said to a manager who disagreed with my lunchtime participation in a user group um, once a month. And You know, my first response was, well, it's none of your damn business. It's my lunch. It's my time. What do you care? Um, but the, you know, the, the feedback was that I don't think that our team is getting value out of you participating in this user group. And my response was, uh, was I'm not so selfish as to think that I have to personally get value every time. I'm a lot of times I'm providing value by being there, by joining the conversation by encouraging others to ask questions there's value in being present at those activities even if you're not passionate about that topic it's important that we support others there's a bunch of data that's out there that if there's a small group and no one's asking questions then people are less likely to ask questions that there's there's data around online, you know, like forums and, and within user groups and conferences that when there's somebody raising a hand, it's more likely other people will then raise their hand to ask a question. And so if you can do nothing more than be there and if no one's raising their hand, then ask a question, raise hand, and kick it off, it will raise the value, the benefit of everybody else to everybody else there. So yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm off my soapbox around that, but yeah, it's, I, I'm glad to see Microsoft is really embracing the user group model and doing a lot more uh, support and they keep hiring MVPs, a lot of MVPs. <laughs> yeah. I think we have to get the number lower <laughs> to get new ones. <laughs> Yeah, well, th is that what it is? So there's so many old timer <laughs> MVPs that are kind of clogging up. So it's like, let's pull them out of the system. That's, let's I think, get him in here. <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, I, there's probably something behind that, you know. Uh, yeah. So we'll have to make that accusation uh, the next time we're uh, all together. But Fabian, really appreciate your, your time and, and getting to know you. For folks that want to follow you and find out more about you or get in contact, what are the best ways to reach you? Uh, you can reach me on Twitter. So DMs are open. Just write me there. Uh, it's uh, Fabian underscore Bader. Uh, or you can visit my blog. It's cloudbrothers.info. And if you live somewhere near Hamburg, just visit the Hamburg PowerShell user group, you're all, always welcome. Excellent. Well, we'll provide all the links, of course, on the blog post and on YouTube. Fabian, it's really great to be able to connect with you. And we'll hopefully see you at the next uh, MVP summit once we're back in person. Yeah, I hope so as I well. Hope. Fingers crossed. Wow. Wow.